The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'll just end with uh, the hesped that Rebbe Chan Masman made about his Rebbe, the Chavetz Chaim. Chavetz Chaim was somebody that, again, like, like Rebbe Meisha, he lived once in hundreds of years, the Chavetz Chaim. How did the Chavetz Chaim become the Chavetz Chaim? That was Rebbe Chanan's kasha at the Hesped. How do you become a Chavetz Chaim? What, what do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you create a Chavetz Chaim? He said, I'll tell you a story that my Rebbe, the Chavetz Chaim, told me once, autobiographical story. And he said, I think that was the site of how he became the Chavetz Chaim. So when he was a little boy learning in Cheder, he was in like a crowd of boys that were, you know, a little bit rougher. And the little kids, and they were all, they were hungry, you know, it wasn't like so much food available. And they were hungry, they wanted an apple. Apple then was like, you know, like a, you know, like a, a, a chocolate bar today, or like a, you know, we're, we're so spoiled, you know, every, we have everything that we want. Back then, an apple was all they had. That was what they dreamt of. They were poor, and there was no, you know, that was their gosh, is having an apple. So they went out into the marketplace, and there was a woman that had a, a push cart full of apples. And the, the kids were like really like rough kids, and they, uh, they, uh, one of them distracted the woman, started talking to her, and the other one like kicked the, Kick, kicked the bottom of the push cart and the apples started rolling all over the place. And the boys, excited, they all hopped, you know, an apple, two apples, or whatever. And the Chavetz Chaim, it's hard to say about the Chavetz Chaim, even as a child, but like, he also took an apple. And they, they were laughing, they enjoyed it. They didn't understand that there was an issue even of, uh, of stealing. They were very, very young. And a couple of weeks later in Yeshiva, the Rabbi was giving a, you know, a shear. And he was saying that, boys, you know, there's an issue of of, uh, of Gezela, you're not allowed to steal. And the Chavetz Chaim, like, little Chavetz Chaim was like listening to this and said, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I'm a Goslin. And he says, Rabbi, like, is there a way that you can, like, what, what can you do if you did steal? Well, the Pasuk says, the Heshev is like Zela Shar Gazla, you, you return it. But the Chavetz Chaim, as a little child, didn't have any money, so he went home right away after Yeshiva, ran home, he was crying to his mother, Mommy, Please, I, I need, I need, give me a, a little change. Give me a little change. So, what do you need it for? What, what, you know, please, I know that money is very tight, but I just, I don't ask. Just please give it to me. And she gave it to him, and she, he ran as fast as he could to the to this poor woman that had the apple cart. And he said that I was one of the children that that stole an apple the other day. I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. Please be my me. And here's here's the money for that I stole. Here's the, here's an apple's worth of money. And Rebbe Chanan says, that's the, that's the Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim's greatness was that everything that he learned, he immediately asked himself, how could I put this into action? If HaKadosh Baruch Hu is teaching me this Taira, it must be that there's a reason, a lesson that's, that's unique to me. And look at what the Chavetz Chaim went on to do. I mean, the Chavetz Chaim, there wasn't a, he wrote dozens and dozens of contrasim. Little pamphlets, you could still see them online or whatever, they had called kids so you can get. There was pamphlets. What were the pamphlets on? He saw that people were shvach and shmir Shabbos. He wrote a pamphlet about, shmir, about the importance of keeping Shabbos. He saw that people in the army, boys are being, Jewish boys are being conscripted to the Russian army and they couldn't keep kosher there, they couldn't keep Shabbos. And there was all the, he, wrote a, he wrote a country about how they could you know, stay strong in the army, what they could do to get around these halachas that, to, to make sure that, you know, that they're not eating tarfas, they're not doing, they're doing shmir, if they're keeping Shabbos, it's in the, the best way possible for them to do it. Why did he have to do that? Well, you know, and then he wrote, of course, the Mishnah Bura. He saw that Klai Yisrael having an issue with Shmir Salash, and he wrote Shmir Salash and Chafetz Chaim, and he went around and he sold his farm all over the world. He, he made a revolution because the Chafetz Chaim was, a, was that still, still that same little boy that when he heard about Le Sigzel, boom, I'm, gonna, I'm not even waiting a second, I'm going to actualize that. And when I see there's a problem, I'm going to make sure to solve that problem. I'm not going to just go to sleep and yawn and, like, you know, and, and, and move on with my life. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to tackle that problem. And so whatever he saw that Kal Yisrael needed, he was the one that was Amid Biparitz. He was the one that went to fill that gap because he saw it as his own personal mission in life to take the Taira and to bring it Lide Maisa. And that's what we have to do. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.